Hi, everyone. Uh, this is Father Javier from St. Paul's. Uh, welcome to another session of our preschool chapel, uh, this time our summer edition. I know we just wrapped up the preschool year, but I thought it'd be great to share a couple of stories with you as we go through the summer uh, so that you can watch them at home. I hope that you are staying safe and that you are well, uh, spending time with your family and enjoying uh, this time together. Uh, now, at the beginning of every preschool chapel service, you'll remember we usually met in our chapel. We're right now in our main church, but I did bring our cross from chapel and I did light our candles as we do at the beginning of every chapel service. And we always say a prayer together at the beginning of chapel. Some of you may remember it, and I hope you'll say it along with me as, uh, as it goes something like this. God made the sun, and God made the trees. God made the mountains, and God made me. Thank you, O oh God, for the sun and the trees, for making the mountains, and for making me. Amen. So today, I have a story for you, a story that fits with that prayer really well, actually. It's the very first story in the Bible. Some of you may have already heard it. We usually tell it at the very beginning of the preschool chapel year. I hope that you'll remember some of the story and maybe you think about it in the context that we're in right now as spring is blossoming forth, as flowers and trees are flowering. This is the story of how God created everything. But the story before everything is made begins a little like this. A long, long, long time ago, before anything was made, before anything was around us, there was just darkness. And God was there looking out over the darkness and God decided on that first day to do something different. God made the light, a light that shines in the darkness. And God looked at that light shining in the darkness and God saw that it was good. And so that was the beginning and the end of the first day. Now, on the second day, God looked around and God decided to make the sky and the clouds in it. Maybe you're able to look outside your window and see a few clouds. That's what God made on the second day. You see the sky here and this cloud right here. And God looked at the light and the sky and the clouds and God saw that it was good. And that was the beginning and the end of the second day. Now, on the third day, God looked around at the sky and the clouds and the light, and God decided to do something more. God decided to make the mountains, and God decided to make the sea, the water, split the waters apart from the earth. And I don't know, maybe you have been to the beach, or maybe you have been up on the mountains and been able to look at all created things, but I think you'll agree that the sea and the mountains are good just like God said at the beginning and the end of that third day. Now on the fourth day, God looked around at the mountains and the sea and the sky and the clouds and the light, and God decided to do something more again. And God made the sun and the moon and the stars that light up the night sky. And God looked up at all those luminaries, all those lights, in the middle of the sky, and God saw that they were good. They were very good. And that was the beginning and the end of the fourth day. Now, on the fifth day, God looked around and noticed that there was something missing. He had mountains, and there was a sky, and there were clouds, but there were no living things. So God made the creatures of the sea and the sky on that fifth day. Can you see the creatures of the sea and the sky here? I like the turtles. I like the bird that's right there and the bee. God made all those things on that fifth day and guess what? God said that they were good. And that was the beginning 
and the end of the fifth day. Now, on the sixth day, God looked around at all those living things, at the whales and the birds, but God knew that something else was missing. God looked around and decided to make the animals that walk on the earth. So God made all those animals we know and love. Maybe you have a dog or a cat. Maybe you have a bunny at home. Uh, maybe you have seen a horse or you have a horse that you have ridden before. God made all those things on that sixth day and God looked around and saw that they were good. But God knew there was something missing before the end of that sixth day. God had land creatures and sea creatures and creatures in the sky. God had made the sky and the clouds and the light. But God had one more thing to make. God made humans. God made people like you and me. God made them in God's image. That's why we have to respect one another. And God looked at all the things that God had made, all the creatures of the earth and the sea and the skies, all the wonderful things that are around us. And God looked around and saw that they were good, that they were very good. And that was the beginning and the end of the sixth day. Now, at the end of six days, God decided to do something a little different. At the end of that sixth day, at the beginning of that seventh day, God decided to take a break. And on that seventh day, God rested. And that's why we rest. That's why there's time for work and there's time for playing, but there's also time for rest. And God looked at all the things that God had made, all the creatures that God had made, and God loved them. And God saw that they were good. That's the story of creation. The story about how God loves this world and made everything in it, including you and me. God loves you. I hope you remember that as you think about this story. Thank you for listening to the story of creation. And now as we do at every chapel service, we'll close our time together with the Lord's Prayer. So let us say it together. I hope you remember it. You can say it with me if you'd like. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you for being with us today, friends. As we do at the end of every chapel services, we're going to put out the candles. First that one, just like that. And then this one. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Amen.